In this module, let us study about the preparation and purification of colloids. Lyophilic salts are readily prepared by mixing the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium. However, lyophobic salts are prepared by special methods since they have no affinity for the solvent. The methods for the preparation of lyophobic colloids can be broadly classified into two categories. Condensation or aggregation methods Dispersion methods We will first discuss the condensation or aggregation methods. As the name suggests, in condensation methods, the smaller particles of the dispersed phase aggregate to form larger particles of colloidal dimensions. That is, the constituent particles in true solutions, such as ions or molecules, are allowed to grow in size to particles of colloidal dimensions. The colloidal solutions are obtained by certain chemical reactions, namely double decomposition, oxidation, reduction and hydrolysis. Let us now discuss some typical reactions for the preparation of salts. Arsenic sulphide salt can be prepared by double decomposition reaction. Hydrogen sulphide gas is passed to a dilute aqueous solution of arsenic oxide to yield arsenic sulphide sol. A colloidal solution of sulphur can be prepared by oxidizing an acme solution of hydrogen sulphide with an oxidizing agent like sulphur dioxide. Salts of gold, silver and platinum can be obtained by the reduction of dilute solutions of their salts with a suitable reducing agent. For example, gold salt can be obtained by reducing a dilute aqueous solution of its salt with formaldehyde. Another reaction commonly used for the preparation of salts is the hydrolysis of the corresponding chlorides. For example, if a small quantity of ferric chloride is added to boiling water, a ferric hydroxide sol is obtained. Let us now discuss the second category, dispersion methods for the preparation of colloids. As the name suggests, in these methods, bigger particles of a substance, like a suspension, are disintegrated into the particles of colloidal dimensions. The two common dispersion methods are electrical dispersion or Briddick's arc method and peptization. Let us discuss electrical dispersion or Briddick's arc method first. This method is commonly used to prepare colloidal solutions of metals such as platinum, silver, and gold. In this method, two electrodes of the metal whose colloidal solution is to be prepared are immersed in the dispersion medium and an electric arc is stuck between the electrodes. The intense heat of the arc vaporizes the metal which gets condensed immediately in the liquid to form a colloidal solution. 
This method thus involves dispersion as well as condensation. We will now discuss the preparation of salts by the peptization method. Peptization is defined as the process of converting a freshly prepared precipitate into colloidal form by adding a small amount of a suitable electrolyte. The electrolytes used for this purpose are called peptizing agents. This process involves the preferential abortion of suitable ions from the electrolyte by the particles of the precipitate to form charged species. These charged species repel one another and as a result the precipitate disintegrates into colloidal size particles. It is important to note that freshly prepared precipitates are preferred because the particles are not firmly attached to each other. For example, the addition of ferric chloride to a freshly prepared precipitate of ferric hydroxide converts it into a colloidal solution, reddish brown in color. Here, the ferric ions from ferric chloride get preferentially absorbed by the ferric hydroxide precipitate. The colloidal solutions prepared by the methods we just discussed are generally associated with some soluble impurities and some excess of electrolyte. Though a trace amount of the electrolyte is sometimes essential for the stability of the colloidal solution, an excess of it causes coagulation of the sol. That is why the sols obtained are subjected to purification to get rid of excess electrolyte. The methods commonly employed for the purification of colloidal solutions are dialysis, electrodialysis and ultrafiltration. Let us discuss these methods one by one. The first method is dialysis. Let us define it as a process to remove or dissolve substance from a colloidal solution by means of diffusion through a suitable membrane. This method is based on the fact that colloidal particles cannot pass through a parchment or a semi-permeable membrane. But the ions of the electrolyte can. The colloidal solution is taken in a bag of cellophane or parchment which is suspended in a vessel through which fresh water flows continuously. The impurities slowly diffuse out of the bag leaving behind a pure colloidal solution. The apparatus used for this purpose is called a dialyzer. A modified form of dialysis is known as electrodialysis. The ordinary dialysis process is a slow process. To hasten the process of purification, dialysis is carried out by applying an electric field. In this process, two electrodes are placed in the water compartment as shown here. When an electric field is applied across the electrodes, the ions of the electrolyte present as the impurity diffuse towards the oppositely charged electrodes at a faster rate. An important application of dialysis is in artificial kidney machines where it is used to cleanse the blood of patients whose kidneys have failed. Let us now discuss the third method for the purification of colloids, ultrafiltration. 
it is important to note that colloidal particles can pass through ordinary filter paper because the pores in the filter paper are bigger than the colloidal particles. The separation of a solute from a colloidal system can be carried out by using an ultra filter which has smaller pores than in ordinary filter. Ultrafiltration is defined as the process of separating colloidal particles from the solvent and the soluble solutes from the colloidal solution by specially prepared filters which are permeable to all substances except the colloidal particles. The size of the pores in the filter paper can be decreased by soaking it in a solution of gelatin or colloidion followed by hardening with formaldehyde. Usually, a colloidion solution is a 4% solution of nitrocellulose in a mixture of alcohol and ether. The filter paper thus formed is known as an ultrafilter and prevents the colloidal particles from passing through it. Ultrafiltration, however, is a slow process. It can be speeded up by applying suction or pressure. To get a pure colloidal solution, the colloidal particles left on ultrafilter paper are stirred with the fresh dispersion medium. In this module, let us learn about emulsions. Emulsions are liquid-liquid colloidal systems in which both the dispersed phase as well as the dispersion medium are liquids. An emulsion may be defined as a colloidal dispersion of two immiscible or partially immiscible liquids in which one liquid acts as the dispersion medium and the other as the dispersed phase. In most emulsions, one of the liquids is water while the other is a hydrocarbon and is referred to as oil. Depending on the nature of the dispersed phase, emulsions are broadly classified into two types. They are oil in water type emulsions and water and oil type emulsions. In oil and water type of emulsions, oil acts as the disperse phase and water acts as the dispersion medium. For example, milk is an emulsion of liquid fat globules dispersed in water. Another well-known example is that of the vanishing cream. In water, an oil type emulsion, water acts as the dispersed phase and oil acts as the dispersion medium. For example, butter is an emulsion of water dispersed in fat. Other common examples of this type are cod liver oil and cold cream. Emulsions are generally unstable and separate in two layers on standing. Thus, to stabilize an emulsion, small quantities of certain other substances called emulsifiers or the emulsifying agents are added. Emulsifying agents stabilize an emulsion by reducing interfacial tension between the two phases. Proteins, gums, natural and synthetic soaps, 
detergents etc are the principal emulsifying agents for oil in water type of emulsions similarly heavy metal salts of fatty acids long chain alcohols lamp black etc are used for water in oil type of emulsions emulsions exhibit properties similar to colloids like the tyndall effect the brownian movement electrophoresis coagulation or demulsification on the addition of electrolytes and so on emulsions can be diluted by adding any amount of the dispersion medium that is water for oil in water type emulsion and oil for water in oil type of emulsion on the other hand if the dispersed phase is added to an emulsion it forms a separate layer an emulsion can be separated into its constituent liquids by boiling freezing centrifuging electrostatic precipitation etc a well known example of centrifuging is the separation of cream from milk Finally, let's see some important application of emulsions. A large number of pharmaceuticals in the form of lotions, creams and ointments which are oil in water or water in oil type of emulsions are prepared to facilitate easy absorption by the body. The cleansing action of soap is based upon the formation of an oil in water emulsion the concentration of ore by the froth flotation process is based upon the treatment of the powdered ore with an oil emulsion milk which is an important constituent of our diet is an emulsion of liquid fat droplets in water the digestion of fat in our body takes place by the process of emulsification asphalt emulsified in water is used for building roads without the necessity of melting the asphalt <laughs>